I want to talk about my hair today because so many of you graciously, thank you, by the way, commented on my hair in the last video. So I'm going to talk about exactly what changes I've made to increase my hair density uh, on the head, the hair on the top of my head. And many of you also commented on the denseness and thickness of my eyebrows. So I'm going to speak about my diet because it all comes down to the diet. And you've heard me say that again and again, that topically we can do whatever to our skin and our hair. But in my opinion, the more important thing is what we put in because those are the building blocks to the tissues actually. So just really quickly, I will show you what I've been using for shampoo. And it's just this VO5, as you can see, it's almost done. 88 cent VO5 pomegranate shampoo. And I have another one on deck because uh, it's almost gone. So that's what I use. Um, I've used Suave. The products are not important. So to get that out of the way though, that's the product I use. And I don't use conditioner. I find it weighs my hair down. So no conditioner, just shampoo two to three times a week. That's it, no product. I wrap it when I go to sleep at night so it doesn't get tangled. I braid it to the side. So on to the main point of this video. There are two key nutrients that I've been really supplying my body with intentionally. The first one is niacin. That's a B vitamin and it's an essential nutrient that acts as an antioxidant in the body. Niacin strengthens the hair and the skin. It has even been shown to prevent certain types of skin cancers and it's protective against skin damage. So niacin or vitamin B3 is very, very important indeed. It's an essential nutrient and it aids in DNA repair as well as helping to convert any food we eat into energy. Being a water soluble vitamin means that it's not stored in the body, therefore you must obtain it from food or supplements. But you all know <laughs> how I feel about supplements. You can do whatever you please, of course, but I personally don't take any supplements besides vitamin D3. I prefer to get my nutrients straight from the source. And in my experience and my humble opinion, getting it from the food source is the best in terms of absorption because consuming an isolated nutrient like niacin or vitamin B in the form of a man-made supplement, yes, you are consuming that amount, but how much of it is actually being absorbed? Much of it is excreted in the urine. So our bodies don't get to assimilate and use the nutrient. And also in nature, uh, the foods that are um, containing the vital nutrients, they're often packaged with complementary nutrients that aid in the absorption of each other. So nature has very nicely uh, made this symphony of um, components um, in these foods that make it so that our bodies can make it uh, work for us. So I will just go over what I have been really focusing on, foods that I have already sung the praises of. The number one food is uh, beef liver and that food is also very high in vitamin A as I've uh, ex explained in a previous video. So that has helped a lot. I will say that when I first started eating organ meat, specifically grass-fed beef liver about four years ago now, my life changed. <laughs> my whole life changed. My skin got better, clearer, more glass-like, glowy, if you will. Um, it just seemed to complement my tretinoin use in terms of my skin health, the integrity of my skin. So the tightness and the um, collagen. Uh, again, a lot of that has to do with tretinoin, which increases the collagen production, but also the preformed vitamin A in beef liver has really done a number on my skin in a good way, so I love it. Just a modest three ounce portion, and that portion has about 15 milligrams of niacin, so it's a good um, addition to the diet if you're not including it. Start eating beef liver, and I will never shut up about it <laughs> because it's the most nutrient-dense food on the planet, actually. So one of the best things you can do to increase your health overall, if you want to, is simply adding a serving of beef liver, you know, twice a month or once a month. Just add it. Is my point is that including it versus not including it is a game changer. So that's the number one superfood of the foods that I eat. The other foods I eat are sardines. I like this because it's in spring water and it has uh, the bones and the skin. So I like to eat the bones and the skin for the calcium. I eat a lot of uh, red 
sockeye wild salmon, again canned. This has the skin and the bones, so it's very important. Calcium and vitamin D from this, it's a very good source. The second nutrient is zinc. After iron, zinc is the most abundant uh, trace mineral in the body. So niacin and zinc are the two nutrients that I've really been focusing on. And again, supplements aren't ideal, especially in zinc, because zinc can in fact interfere with a lot of medications. So although I'm not on any medications, that's just something to note. Uh, that a lot of supplements in general can interfere with certain drugs. Um, I also don't like isolated supplements because you can get too much and it's very hard to get too much from a natural source. So I'll stop with the supplements, but I'm not anti-supplement, I just don't take them personally myself. With zinc, there's again no storage system in the body for zinc, so we must obtain it from food. The food that is the highest in zinc that I love to eat are oysters. These are just boiled whole oysters uh, from South Korea. Other foods that are high in zinc are red meat, seafood, shellfish, crab, anchovies, whole grains, beans, nuts, chickpeas. All of these foods are rich in zinc. So personally, I like to eat shellfish. I love crab. I love oysters. And uh, I do eat beef once every 10 days or so. Beef is not my favorite food, I have to say, but I eat it for the nutrition, so I do include it in my diet. The great thing about um, zinc and niacin is that a lot of foods contain both. So that's why I'm speaking about them in conjunction, because many foods uh, contain both, so that's great. Zinc is critical in wound healing, cell division, uh, immune function, and healthy skin. Studies have also shown that zinc helps to slow the progression of age-related macular degeneration, so that's very important indeed. It's important also in metabolic function and digestion and nerve health, so all of the things that matter the most. <laughs> if you're not including zinc and niacin-rich foods in your diet, start and start with uh, beef liver. <laughs> That's the number one food, I think, of all foods, actually. Start incorporating some healthy zinc and niacin-rich foods in your diet. See if the quality of your hair and your skin and your nails, see if it doesn't improve, because it has for me. And I still have no, uh, my scalp psoriasis that I used to have before I changed my diet. It's in remission completely, so I've not had a recurrence of that, and that is one indicator that my skin is in very good health indeed. So that's what I do. I don't do anything uh, special. I don't color my hair. You always hear me say that whatever we put in, um, it comes out. We see it in the uh, skin, which is the largest organ of the body, and it's on the outside, so we wear what we consume. And I, that's why I'm so passionate about healthy diet and healthy lifestyle. The diet, it's always coming down to the diet uh, with health in general. And that's something that a lot of people don't want to hear because it means uh, making certain changes. It puts the onus on us to create those changes. Yes, a portion of it is genetic, of course, but all the good genes in the world are not going to help you if your lifestyle is poor, in much the same way that if your genes are such that you have cancer, for instance, in your family or Alzheimer's running in your family, if you adopt certain lifestyle habits, epigenetically, we turn on and off those receptors. So in other words, a good diet and lifestyle can save you from poor genes, likewise, Poor lifestyle habits will not negate good genes. <laughs> so if you have good genes for hair not graying and hair not thinning, but if your lifestyle sucks, <laughs> that's not going to save you. So I hope I made my point. And I just want to encourage you. I want to always encourage you that you have the power. We each have the power. So be mindful. Be mindful of the foods you consume and what you avoid. Good luck, and I wish you well. Thank you, as always, for watching. Bye.